Hey there, this is World of Tea, and I'm John. It's a quaint, quiet, tranquil winter night in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And on nights like these, I like to treat myself to a very specific tea before I drift off to sleep. And that tea is chamomile. Today I'm going to be talking about the Harney and Sons chamomile. And I'm really excited to explore this, because chamomile is one of my favorite teas of all time. Since I was a little kid, I would be drinking chamomile before going to bed. And actually, that's something I have in common with a lot of people throughout history. History. Chamomile throughout history has been one of the most ubiquitous teas known to man. Even in ancient Egypt, there have been hieroglyphs found that have mentions of chamomile. Chamomile was consumed during the Roman Empire. It was traded throughout the world by the British Empire. And even now, in the year 2024, chamomile is still one of the most widely consumed teas in the world. So I get pretty excited to talk about that. So if you don't know, there are actually two different types of chamomile. There are two chamomile teas that come from two separate species, and I am going to be talking about Egyptian or German chamomile today. There is German chamomile, and there is Latin chamomile or Roman chamomile. So German chamomile is a specific type of chamomile. Um, well, German chamomile grows a lot more spread out. It grows in Egypt. It grows in Germany. It grows all throughout Europe. Roman chamomile is a bit more specific. The flowers are a bit bigger, and that only grows in England. So most of the time you've had chamomile, it's probably German chamomile. Anytime you go to the grocery store and pick up tea bags, nine times out of ten, you're going to be talking about German chamomile. That's what I'm talking about today. Roman chamomile is a whole other experience. It's very similar, but it's a different species. It happens to have the same name. It has apple notes to it. It's a lot sweeter. That's something I'm going to talk about on a different date. But today we're going to be talking about German chamomile. So with that, let's get into the smell. So chamomile is a flower tea, and you can really smell that. You just get this very gentle floral sensation. And if I could describe the scent as one thing, I would describe it as mild. Just kick back your feet and relax and frolic through a meadow of flowers. It's very relaxing. It's very mild. It's very sweet. It's a subtle flavor, and there's not too much to it. It's simple. It's there. Everybody's had chamomile. So let's talk about the leaf quality a little bit. So one of the reasons I'm so excited about this specific brand is they actually just give you the loose leaf flowers. And I thought that's really cool because most of the time you get chamomile tea, you get the ground up flowers. And that's where the key, the tea bags are. Now, I do have to say, um, and this is going to take points away from this, these tea tins I've ordered off Amazon, they have a lot of that fluff at the bottom. So the ground up flour, um, there's a lot of that that winds up in the tin. So when you start off the tin, you're getting more flour. And when you get deeper into the tin, you're getting more of that grind, uh, that ground up powdery um, flour. So it's just kind of hard to control for experience. Um, but a very good leaf quality. I really love it. One of my favorite things in tea is when you can see what the tea is made out of. Like when you see blueberries and blueberry tea um, or uh, passion fruit seeds and passion fruit flavored yerba mate. So with that, let's get into the flavor. And you're going to see the flavor on this is just very, again, it's a lot like the scent, but it's just very like, even in the liquid color, it's very mild. Um, this has been steeping at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Chamomile, it is recommended to brew it closer to 212, but again, Albuquerque is higher up than Denver. We're over a mile up here, so I cannot bring my water temperature to a full boil. Um, 100 Celsius for you guys in other countries, but let's talk about it. And just like the scent, it's a very mild flavor. It goes down very easy. Um, everybody's had chamomile at some point in their life. And if you haven't, please try it. It's something that I feel every human um, should experience. It's just very simple. It's very calming. Um, you sip it and you just think everything's going to be all right. I could sip, I've been sipping this tea before bed for multiple weeks now. And every single time I have it, it's very relaxing. It's floral. Um, it doesn't punch you in the face. It's not like other teas. There's some teas I have where you sip it and you get all of those flavors just rushing you at once. This is a lot more subtle. It's a lot more mild. 
So let's get into the price. So this specific tin of chamomile for 1.5 ounces was $10. That's actually not too bad. Um, a lot of teas are very expensive. Um, and obviously, if you want to buy in bulk, you can get it for a lot cheaper. But $10 for a tin, it's hard to argue with. And this lasts you surprisingly long, too. It says on the tin 12 to 15 cups, but I've brewed many, many, many pots of tea um, with the former tin. I want to say it was... I want to say it was in the 15 to 20 range, more so than the 12 to 15. Because when I brew a pot of tea, I usually get two or three cups out. So that's been my experience, at least. But overall, a good value. Um, it's definitely marketed as a premium product. Now, here's the only thing you have to keep in mind. Chamomile specifically, because of economics of scale, it is very cheap. You can go out to the grocery store and get 20 bags of chamomile for something in between three and four dollars so it's not going to compare to that but in terms of that novelty of actually seeing the flowers and those flowers you just put it into your teapot um i i think that's a cool experience so what would i rate this i would rate this a four out of five stars it's a really good tea. It's simple. It's cam. It's just, it does its job. Um, the only reason that I can't give it a full five-star review is it's very inconsistent. And I know I mentioned this earlier in the video, but when you get deeper and deeper and deeper into the tin, you get more and more of this fluff of this grounded up flower. And um, it's not the biggest deal in the world, but to me, um, when I'm brewing loose leaf tea like this in a teapot the thing about chamomile is those flakes are so finely grounded up that they can actually make their way um and they can escape out of my filter and into my teapot and the holes on this are pretty tiny so that's the only reason i have to take some points away from this but this was a very good experience i really enjoyed it so i would recommend it i would recommend it so tell me I have a few ideas for videos coming up. I could talk about matcha green tea. I could talk about chai tea. I could go back and do a few yerba reviews. I heard some suggestions that I talk about terere. I really like that. Um, there's a chai morao, a yokoi chai morao I want to talk about. I love chai morao. Uh, what do you guys want to see out of me next? Or do you guys want to see something more along the lines of a history of yerba mate or a history of chamomile? Or do you want me to get more into the history of certain teas? But whatever you guys want i want to hear about what you guys are interested in in the comments down below and until then keep on sipping tea